I am Mistress Aileon. I have not much of the story told, but this is the only story that I tell. <laughs> so, it was my second Warriors and Warlords, and I was camping with my friend Consul. Consul, as we drove up to the site, she saw someone that she knew, and we got out of the car and we walked in the direction that we thought the campsite might be. And she walked right up to this man. Well, I didn't recognize him. She said, did you finish your post? And he said, yes, I finished my post. And then they kissed passionately. <laughs> and I said, oh, Consul, this must be your new boyfriend. How nice to meet you. And that's when I realized that although Consul and I would be camping together in the same uh, tent, I would probably be alone in the tent most of the time. This is okay with me, it was a small tent, but I was I was worried it was my first time camping, and I was worried that I would set myself or other things on fire. However, yes, it was nice to have the extra space. After my very first bar circle, which was Saturday night, I woke up somewhat late, but before the rest of the campsite, um, and I thought I really should change it. You know, I really should. And so, I gathered up a few things. I was right across, our campsite was right across from the bathhouse, so I thought, great, I'll get some undies, I'll get some mundane clothes, I will get ready to pack up. And I went around back of the tent to get my suit out. Yes, this is back when I used to camp with a suitcase, because I did not know any other way to sleep outside of my house than by bringing a suitcase with all my things in it. The suitcase had not been in the tent, because I was worried that the tent with both of us would not have enough room for the suitcase. I could have brought it in. And she never came back most nights. However, I did not. And... I left the zipper open to the pocket. You're starting to see where this could go. So there I am. And I'm looking basically for undies. And I reach for the pocket. And something crawls out. And I look at it. And a sunbeam slants down on my face. And I look at it. And it scuttles. It skitters and scuttles. And I think... That's a scorpion. Don't laugh now, laugh later. <laughs> That's a scorpion. Remember, this is in uh, uh, Western Wisconsin. That's a scorpion. So I was a little frightened. And I stood there for a moment and I tried to figure out how am I going to get my underwear. When from over across the campground comes my friend Constantine, one of the very first people I ever met in the FCA, and a man with a great sense of chivalry and drama. And he said, greetings, my lady. How are you this fair morning? I think he was fresh from a, a duel at dawn fight that he won. Very proud of himself. And he said, um, greetings, my lady. How may I help you? And I said, um, actually, I could use a little advice. I think there are scorpions in the pocket of my suitcase. And he said, that's not good. And so he took the suitcase by its handle. And he walked back around my tent, and he went to the clearing around which the pocket came out. Oh, my guys with our balls. And he, and he took the suitcase, and he threw it down in the middle of the clearing. And he took out his rapier. Imagine the sound of a rapier being taken out of a, out of a what do you call that thing? Scabbard. Scabbard, thank you. Imagine the sound of a rapier being taken out of a scabbard. And he went like that. And he went like that. And he went, whap, 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 whap. And he says at that point, my lady, if there was anything alive in there before, I am hoping it's not alive anymore. And I said, I definitely agree with you. So he took his rapier, and of course the zipper was still open. He took the rapier, and he poked, you know all rapiers have that little end to them, and if they're safe rapiers. He poked that very end into the pocket, and he drew out a bra. And he drew out a pair of pants. 
<laughs> now people are starting to gather because they've been woken up by the sound of the whap, 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 etc. People are coming out of their tents, people are stopping as they walk by, and I'm going, oh my God. Did I mention, here, here's something I did not mention. I really didn't bring any pajamas. Because I didn't think about that, so I've been sleeping in my chemises. This was my sheerest chemise, and it's pretty much all I was wearing, so I was kind of like this. Trying to make sure that the morning sun did not slant in the wrong place. So I'm standing there going like this, not, not with the vapor. And people are coming out of their tents. And he reaches in again, and he pulls out the packet of unused feminine protection. And I turn about 14 shades of crimson. And he says, my lady, I think that's all that was in there. I think it's safe now, and I said, thank you, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate that. You can go on about your business now. So I take the underwear, and I give it an experimental shake, and nothing falls out of it, and I go to the bathhouse, and I change into the stupid underwear and put some other clothes on, and I'm fine. So I come back. you think the story would be over. The story is sadly not over, because Falcon's Keith contains a guy named Jean Pierre. And Javier thinks it's funny to capitalize on other people's misfortunes and feelings. So Javier had this stuffed spider that you turn it on, and it's sound activated, and it goes, it was like this. It goes, and vibrates when someone comes up to it. And he decided it would be very funny to put that just inside the opening to my tent. And I jumped really high. And he laughed really loud. And he said, when we all settled down, he said, I'm sorry I had to. So what would you feel anyway? I heard him slapping your your uh, suitcase with his red beer. I said, yeah. He said, what was going on? I said, I think there's scorpions in my suitcase. And he said, scorpions. He said, scorpions. And I said, yes, they skittered. He said, why don't you see if you can find one of these and show me. So I went around back, because I figured that's where they'd be there. I went around back of the tent, and I found a box that my blow-up bed came in, which I had been leaving to sit there, so it was full of dew and everything. I picked it up, and I and I noticed that there were some, some of these things skittering down in the bottom. So I showed it to him, and I said, look, look, these. I was I was much more uh, brave when it was at the end of the very long box. <laughs> I picked up the box, and I said, here, they look like this. And he said never seen, what did they go? I've never seen an earwig. You've never seen an earwig. I said, no, I've never seen an earwig. It's not really a story with an ending so much, but it's, got a punch it's over now, so it all works out. <laughs>